is pressed. Ken, are you ready to go? Yeah, John, if you had to talk so damn long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your presenter tonight is well known to you. Ken is extremely well known for his large scale biographical presentations about famous astronomers and astrophysicists. So we're going to test him tonight. We're going to see if he can do a short presentation about the biography of an astrophysicist. I give you Ken Burton and Stephen Hawking, remember. Thank you. Uh, now I have to find the darn presentation, so I'll be right with you. Jeff, juggle something. <laughs> da, da, da. Start, no one can see, right? So I want to call your attention to the uh, Jacob's Ladder case here. There is a spider who has made a very poor life decision in it. So <laughs> make sure to check that out when you're here. See how much fun the board is? <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am before speaking before a group. <laughs> um, as, you, as many of you know, that I, I give many presentations on historical uh, individuals in astronomy uh, from the early days of astronomy right on through the present day. Um, it's something I enjoy doing. There's a lot of uh, places to go for the information on the internet in particular today. It makes it a lot, tiny bit easier to do. However, you do have to go over it. Now, as far as Stephen Hawking is concerned, we lost him this last year. And uh, this is from Alan and Cheryl, by the way. Humankind Space Exploration Vehicles, if you can see the Am I okay? That's good? Okay. Um, you can see this different aspect, and of course that last one there is Stephen Hawking's uh, wheelchair. Pi Day, March the 14th, 2018, saw the passing of the world-renowned physicist and cosmetologist, uh, Dr. Stephen William Hawking. Um, he was born on the 8th of January, 1942, and passed away again on the 14th. Uh, Stephen William Hawking was born in Oxford, England, on January the 8th, 1942, 300 years to the day, he liked to point out, after the death of Galileo, who had begun the study of gravity. Uh, his mother, the former Isabel Walker, had gone to Oxford to avoid the bombs that fell nightly during the Blitz of London. His father, Frank Hawking, was a prominent research biologist. Hawking was an English theoretical physicist, um, a cosmologist, an author and director of research at the Center for Theoretical Cosmology within the University of Cambridge. His scientific works include the collaboration with Roger Penrose of gravitational singularity theorems in the framework of general relativity and the theoretical prediction that black holes emit radiation, often called Hawking radiation. Hawking was the first to set out a theory of cosmology explained by a union of the general theory of relativity and the quantum mechanics. He was a vig vigorous supporter of the many worlds interpretations of quantum mechanics. Hawking was an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Arts lifetime member of the Pontifical Academy of Scientists, Sciences and a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States. 2002, Hawking was ranked number 25 in the BBC's poll of 100 Greatest Britons. He was a Lucasian professor of mathematics at the University of Cambridge between 1979 and 2009 and achieved commercial successes with works of popular science in which he discusses his own theories of cosmology and, and in general. His book, A Brief History of Time, appeared on the British Sunday Times bestseller list for a record-breaking 237 weeks. Hawking had a rare, early onset, slow progressing form of motor neuron disease, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, and the Lou Gehrig's disease that gradually paralyzed him over the decades. Even after the loss of his speech, he was still able to communicate through a speech-generating device, initially through the use of handheld switch, and eventually by using a single cheek muscle. He died on the 14th of March at the age of 76. Hawking had a rare early onset. Oh, I got that already. He was experienced. 
Uh, increasing cleanliness during his final year at Oxford, including a fall on some stairs and difficulties when rowing. Problem worsened and his speech became slightly slurred. His family noticed changes when he returned home from Christmas and medical investigators were begun. Medical investigations were begun. The diagnosis of motor neuron disease came when Hawking was 21. In 1963, at the time doctors gave him a life expectancy of two years, the disease reduced his bodily control to the flexing of a finger and voluntary eye movements, but left his mental faculties untouched. He went on to become his generation's leader, exploring gravity and the properties of black holes at the bottomless gravitational pits so deep and dense that not even light can escape them. That work led to the turning point in modern physics, playing itself out in the closing months of 1973 on the walls of, the, of his brain when Dr. Hawking set out to apply quantum theory, the weird laws that govern subatomic reality to black holes. In a long, daunting calculation, Dr. Hawking discovered in his befuddlement that black holes whose mythological avatars of cosmic doom were not really black at all. In fact, he found they would eventually fizzle, leaking radiation and particles, and finally explode and disappear over the eons. Uh, that triumph, uh, his life, had, what a triumph life has been, said Martin Rees, a Cambridge University cosmologist and astronomer Loyal Bingham and Dr. Hawking's longtime colleague. Quote, his name will live in the annals of science. Millions have had their cosmic horizons widened by his best-selling books, and even more around the world have been inspired by a unique example of achievement against all the odds, a manifestation of amazing willpower and determination. A brief history of Stephen Hawking. He spent his scientific life exploring some of the deepest questions of human uh, thought in the Einsteinian opera of space and time that, uh, that space and time could, could uh, ask. Although Einstein himself never really accepted it, his general theory of relativity predicted that if enough mass or energy were concentrated at one point, space would sag like mattresses and, and eventually close itself off, creating a black hole with, from which nothing, not even light, could ever escape. It would be Dr. Hawking's fate to explore these imagined monsters and ask what their presence portends for the universe and for those of us who live inside of it. In 1965, when Dr. Hawking was 23, the British mathematician Roger Penrose proved that if Einstein's theory of gravity general relatively works correct, there is a point of infinite density, a singularity at the center of a black hole. 1970, building on the work, uh, in Dr. Hawking's doctoral dissertation, he and Dr. Prenrose show that there had to be a singularity at the beginning of time, in other words, a big bang. That is to say, he showed that the universe had a beginning. In 1970, Dr. Hawking shows that the area of a black hole's event horizon, the sphere of the surface, marking the point of no return, can only increase, never decrease, as stuff falls into the black hole or it collides and merges with other black holes. In 1971, he suggested that many black holes much smaller than the stars created the big, in the Big Bang could be peppered in the universe. 1974, he shocks his colleagues in the world by showing that black holes will leak and explode when quantum, quantum effects, uh, the weird laws that describe subatomic behavior, are taken into account. In 1976, Dr. Hartman says, exploding black holes add randomness and unpredictability to the universe forever erasing information about what might have fallen into a black hole. Quantum physis physicists objected, saying that the universe can't forget. Initiating a 40-year argument about the fate of, of information, Dr. Hawking concedes in 2004, but does not say how information is preserved in the black hole, and the argument continues to this day. In 1982, using a mathematical uh, con uh, conceit called imaginary time, Dr. Hawking, uh, Hawking and James Hartle Theoretical physicists at the University of California, Santa Barbara, propose a model of a self-contained universe that has no boundary in space or time, and thus no place or time when the laws of physics break down. In their picture of cosmic history, space-time is like a globe of the Earth. Time starts at the North Pole and goes south as the universe gets fat, and goes south as the universe gets fatter. Asking what came before the Big Bang in this case is like asking what is north of the North Pole. They said, moreover, 
Just as we, nothing weird happens at the North Pole of the Earth, nothing strange happens at the laws of physics at time zero. Earth abides and so does physics, obviating the need for a creator. In 1988, Dr. Hawking, sorry about that, and, and, and Dr. Hawking publishes a brief history of time. It stays on the London bestseller list for four years, starting a gold rush of scientific books by prominent scientists. In 1991, Errol Morris directs a documentary of the same name about Dr. Hawking and his life. 2007, Dr. Hawking is briefly free of gravity at last on a vomit comet flight in Florida. Uh, in 2012, Dr. Hawking stars in the opening of the Paralympic Games in London. In 2015, The Theory of Everything, a movie based on a book by his ex-wife, Jane Well, wins an Oscar for Eddie Redmayne. 2010, Dr. Hawking tells the Discovery Channel that if any aliens visit us, the outcome could be much as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. We only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop in something we wouldn't want to meet. In 2015, he presides over the announcement of the Breakthrough Listen, a $100 million uh, search for signals from extraterrestrial civilizations. Quote, in an infinite universe, there must be other occurrences of life, end of quote, he said. And continuing, or do our lights wander uh, a lifeless universe? Either way, there is no bigger question. That's the end of the quote. But he is sure that about time travel. In 1991, he enunciated that what he called the chronology protect, protection conjecture that will, as he put it, keep the world safe for historians it says that the laws of physics do not allow time machines. In, 19, in 2016, working with Andrew Stromager uh, at Harvard and Malcolm Perry at Cambridge University, Dr. Hawking took a small step toward a solution of the infamous, infamous uh, information paradox. He announced that information about what falls into a black hole might be preserved on the surface or event horizon of a black hole. The universe will remember us, which is no small thing he declared, if the rules break down in black holes, they must be lost in other places as well, he warned. If information disappears into the gaping maw, the notion of a past itself might be in jeopardy. He couldn't even be sure of our own histories. Our memories could be illusions. It's the past that tells us who we are. Without it, we lose our identity. Stephen Hawking, the English cosmologist and black hole maven, like to say that he was born 300 years to the day after Galileo died, and he died on Wednesday, 139 years after Albert Einstein was born. That was a fitting bookend. In popular press, he was often referred to as the greatest physicist since Einstein. That, he always said, was media hype, driven by the public thirst for heroes. As someone who might have contributed in small way over the years to his impression, I have to say I agree. History will pass judgment on what dubious and problematic, uh, dis and problematic distinction. But Dr. Hawkins' life was Einsteinian, and he was a hero, not just for what he taught about the universe, but for what he taught us about how to live. Whether or not he overturned the universe, he did overturn our imaginations. To the public, however, he was, in Homer Simpson's words, the wheelchair guy, who despite being slowly paralyzed by Lou Gehrig's disease, amitrophic uh, literal sclerosis, a lateral sclerosis to the point where he could move only an eyeball, roamed the world and figuratively the universe, married twice, fathered three children, wrote bestsellers and nurtured generations of graduate students. It was a, he was the kind of guy who showed up at his 60th birthday party with a broken leg after flipping his wheelchair trying to take a street corner too fast. A guy whose eyes lit up with a mischievous grin uh, at good and bad jokes. He mingled with, with kings and presidents and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. He had hoped someday <laughs> to take a trip to the edge of space on Richard Bronson, Branson's uh, Virgin Galactic spaceship. Uh, he, re he preferred to be called Stephen. He was proud of being a family man. His sense of humor was legendary, said Kip Thorne, his old friend and recent Nobel laureate from Caltech with whom he collaborated on the seeds of what would become the movie Interstellar. 
When he started his sentence laboriously on his computer, he never knew whether it would end in a deep pearl of wisdom or an off-the-wall joke, said Dr. Thorne. He said, um, to scientists, however, he will be forever known for finding the relation, to, relation between gravity in the form of Einstein's general theory of relativity that bends the cosmos and determines its destiny and the atomic randomness that lives inside it, swept helplessly along the river of time. There were, for example, what had been called the Black Hole Wars. His breakthrough calculation had come with a huge price tag for physics. When black holes exploded, all the information about what had fallen into the world would be erased. God not only plays dice with the universe, Dr. Hawk, last page, Dr. Hawkins said in 1976, paraphrasing Einstein, and outraging many physicists for whom it is an article of principle that they can untangle the history of the universe, but sometimes he throws them where he, they can't be seen, and so the fight was on. Two years later, Dr. Hawking had made an art form of admitting his mistakes, said he was wrong, but it turned out that nothing had been settled. Also like Einstein, even when he made a mistake, Dr. Hawking was being productive. How and if information gets in and out of a black hole is now one of the thorniest, most profound and hotly debated questions of physics. Its resolution, most agree, will likely require, dare I call it, Einsteinian revolution in which we view space and time. The universe, they say, might be a hologram. It is hard not to perceive, peeking out from behind the math and the inscrutable space-time diagrams in which this debate takes place, the need and the desire of all humans for some kind of reassurance that death be not final, that something is left behind. The black hole is now claimed, Dr. Hawking, from his life on the boundary of oblivion. And there is indeed something left behind, a mischievous or mischievous grin and a great, great mystery. And so there's the story of Dr. Stephen Hawking. No question. Good. Okay. I covered it all. Good for me. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs>